Amen, amen, amen. I don't know about you, but I have been blessed of the Lord this weekend. Amen, amen. I'm so thankful for the heritage that we have here. So thankful for the ministry that has come through this place. Amen, amen. I'm glad to be a part of it. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about Naaman. Amen. As Naaman came and he was a leper and he came to the house of the prophet Elisha. Amen. And he, and he said, I, I heard that you can do miracles. I heard that there, there have been those that have talked and have sent me to you. And, and I need you to take care of this leprosy. Amen. And we know that Elisha never came to the door, but sent word through his servant. And said, go wash seven times in the river Jordan. Now Naaman was a man of action, a man of war. He was a general and a captain, and, and he had many times led men into a fierce battle. He had many he had earned his stripes, so to speak. And he knew what it was to hold a sword and to lead a horse. And he knew what it was to feel the heat of battle. But when the prophet said, go wash in the river Jordan, something didn't sit right with Naaman. And he said, wait a second, you mean that nasty, filthy, dirty muck that I passed on my way through? That smell. He said, I have leprosy and that smell turned my stomach. Yeah. He said, I, that's, that's, that's terrible. Why? Why? And it says that he left in a rage. He left and he was upset and angry at the prophet and at his God. Amen. But I, I, he had a voice. Yeah. He, he had somebody that was with him that, amen, had a voice of reason. Mm -hmm. Thankful to have men in my life that when, when I'm going off course, they, they can correct me and they can speak into my life. Sure. Amen. But he had someone with him that said, wait a second, Naaman. Now I've been with you. I've spent time with you. I've seen you. Man, there's nobody like you on the battlefield. You can, you can do so many... Naaman, I, you're a mighty man of valor. What, what is this little thing? Yeah. If, if Elisha had told you to go slay a thousand men, if he had told you to go into battle unarmed, you would have done anything. You would have done any crazy awesome thing. And you would have succeeded. What's this little thing? Well, what's, what's the river? What's a little mud going to do? What can it hurt? Amen. Amen. Tonight, I, I know we each have a need. We walked into this place with a need tonight. Each and every one of us walked into this place with a deficit. Something is not right. There's something in your life. Maybe, maybe you, it's right on the tip of your tongue right now, or maybe you have to think a little bit. But every one of us have something that we need from the Lord. Yes. Amen. What will you let stop you tonight? What will you allow to, to, to hinder you from getting your healing, from getting your deliverance? Amen. Amen. What will you allow to get between you and what you came here needing tonight? Amen. If you would, let's all stand. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer tonight. Amen. Bringing every need, every desire, everything that we have. But before we bring our needs to the Lord, let's give Him praise, glory, and honor that is due unto His name. Let's worship Him tonight. Amen. If you're a member of Haven Pentecostal Church, let's worship Him for 51 years.
If you're here visiting tonight, let's worship Him for all that He has done, all that He has yet to do. Oh, let's give the Lord glory tonight. Oh, God, we magnify and glorify Your precious name. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, move, set free, deliver, and heal. Lord, we thank You for what You have done in the past. We thank You for what you will do in the future but right now we need you in this place oh here tonight oh we have a need in this place lord oh speak the word oh god show us what it is that you would have for us to do oh god nothing is too big nothing is too small lord speak the word speak the word lord oh move upon your people tonight move upon our hearts and our minds hallelujah Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, he is worthy. He is wonderful. He is mighty. Oh, yes, Lord. Brother Davis said something really cool this morning. I don't know if he meant it, uh, but quite a, uh, the way it hit me that he said, isn't it amazing that from a baptism in water there could come fire? And uh, I got to thinking, I seem to remember another story in the Bible where Elijah had built an altar. And it was doused in water. I mean, buried in water. And uh, soaked. And then there came the fire. And I thought, man, all the way back into the Old Testament where we didn't even know there would be a Holy Ghost. There was the example of baptism in water so that the fire could be made manifest. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, our songs are going to be exactly in that order. We're going to talk about repentance and being cleansed. And if you are not quite there, we, we invite you to, where you're, where you're at or at the altar, whatever it is, just pray that simple prayer. God, whatever it is in my life, forgive me. Help me to be submitted to you. Help me to be fully surrendered to you, God, that you might be glorified in my life. That the Holy Ghost fire might be made manifest in my life. And then we're going to sing about the power of the Holy Ghost. And it is my prayer that as we sing the power of the Holy Ghost, we may manifest in your life. In Jesus' name.
to the Lamb today. Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy anniversary, Haven. Again, 51 years. Hallelujah. Established in this city. You can be seated tonight in your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir, for leading us into the presence of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible, sir, or the Bible, Dr. Webster says that anniversaries are an important part of life. They remind us of important events, both of personal and cultural context. Whether we're marking a birthday or a wedding or a civil partnership, monumentous event, or the death of a loved one. I liked how it ended. An anniversary puts a pin on the calendar to remind us of something that matters to us. The house of the living God should be a pin marker on our calendar that this matters to us. That an apostolic, Pentecostal, oneness preaching, Jesus name baptizing, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking church is important to us. It's important to God. It's important to this world. Amen. Give yourselves a hand, Haven. Hallelujah for 51 great years 
of service and ministry to the king. God is worthy of your praise tonight. So grateful to be with you again in the house of the Lord. Pastor Friels, if you don't know who I am, from South Gibson, and we are honored to be here with you, honored to be asked to kind of MC. Whether you want to call me the EMCC or the master of ceremonies, I don't like the term master applied to me in anything. I'm the jack of all trades and master of none. Amen. But here we are, and we're blessed to be a part of this anniversary service. Give honor to your pastor tonight, to your first wife, to the first lady tonight. My first wife, your first lady. <laughs> your first and last, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. We've known these folks a good long while. I say, I, see, I got my Kentucky thing. I'll come across the river since I got so chastised Friday night. A while. I've known you all for a while. I remember the first time I came to this church down there on the corner. 1978, I had not yet been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I was about three weeks removed from my first uh, time sitting in a Pentecostal church. And as many of you probably remarked too, it's like, these people are crazy. And it was family for me. My uncle was the pastor. And I remember the first time I walked into Haven on a Saturday night, me and Carrie Davis walked, came down and walked in. And the first thing that, that comes to my mind when I think of that as I walked in that church, it was July 1978, and there were shoes <laughs> all over the place. Empty shoes all over the place. Not yet understanding that when you have to stand on a slanted floor for a couple of hours, it wreaks havoc on your calves. I just thought y'all were crazy too. They've got them on the north side of the river and the south side of the river. Hallelujah. But what a great friendship. 41 years of being affiliated with Haven Pentecostal Church. Bishop Clement was a great man, was there when I received the Holy Ghost that very summer at our Santa Claus campgrounds there in, in, in Holiday World. And uh, it's just been a great journey. And I am honored that we have been able to be a part of this church for these years. My wife taught here. My children went to school here for several years. Such an impact Haven Pentecostal Church has made on the Friels family. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Excited for the future of this church. Amen? Amen. Excited for the future of this church. God has great things in store yet for us. Amen? Amen. Today is the ninth, ninth day of Sivan. If you're keeping track on your Hebrew calendar, the year 5,779 since Adam was created. It was on this very day that Moses was commanded by God to ascend up to a mount in the peninsula of Sinai. And it was on that very mount on the 50th day of the Feast of the Weeks that God commanded him to climb up and he delivered unto him the Ten Commandments. According to the Talmud and the ancient sages, it was the beginning of 40 days of God delivering the Torah in written form, in a translated form to Moses of how the people of Israel, the children of Israel should be governed going forward. It was on this very same day, this very same day, this is the ninth day of Sivan in the Hebrew calendar, this day, the 50th day after the 49 days of the Feast of Weeks, hallelujah, the 50th day, Pentecost, if you were looking at it in the Greek, this day, that in an upper room, on the very same day that God commanded Moses to climb the mountain, he would speak with him, and the glory of the Lord shone upon the face of Moses when he came down from the mountain, that a group of 120 ascended up into a little upper room, and they tarried until power came down from on high, and when those around saw it, it was like the children of Israel, hearing the thunder, seeing the smoke and the fire come down, and the thunderings and the lightnings as the voice of God spoke to Moses. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. We are living that today. We are living that today. The day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're apostolic? Aren't you glad you know this truth? Aren't you glad that promise that was once delivered to the saints is alive and well and living in you today if you're filled with his spirit? The promise that God made back in Genesis 3.15 that I'm going to put a hatred between you, Satan, and the woman. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring up a seed. Hallelujah. He'll bruise your head. You may bruise his heel. Hallelujah. But God confirmed it and he ratified it and he fulfilled the promise in that little upper room on the ninth of Sivan in Jerusalem. I'm glad to be apostolic. I'm glad to know the fullness of this truth tonight. Amen. Amen. Brother Wagner gave us a very flattering, just a little text after we were here Friday night, and he made a comment, something like, you know, it's good to have apostolic friends. It's good to have apostolic fellowship. It's good to have brothers and sisters of like precious faith 
that we can join together, unite together with, feel comfortable with, Brother White, feel at home with, having that same spirit residing in us that wells up and we feel it together and we unite together in worship and praise and prayer and suffering and rejoicing. I'm glad to be a part of the apostolic church. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We got some singing to do. South Gibson's got a few folks. Brother White's going to sing to us first tonight, or he's got something to sing for us this evening. Amen? We want you to worship the Lord as he sings this evening. I want you to stand to your feet. Just for, you, sit, you sat down for a while. Just stand up for a second. Get ready, because you know he's going to want you to stand. You know he's going to play something that's going to make you get up. You might as well get ahead of the game. Go ahead, Brother White. Sing to us tonight. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is good, as always, to be in the house of the Lord and, and with the saints at Haven Pentecostal Church. Love this place. Love the people very dearly. You're all very, very special to me. You're special to South Gibson. Um, sister, I think I'm going to be in B-flat. <clears throat> you know, um, I spent a long time fighting the truth. Though I was raised to know the apostolic way, it, it took me an awful long time to really sell out. And uh, a lot of people go looking for Jesus. But I want to tell you something. He came looking for me. He was pursuing me. He was hot on my trail. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that one day he finally got a hold of me, got through my stubborn hard heart, and he made a believer out of me. And uh, I'm going to hold on to this truth till my dying day. And I'm so glad for the grace and the mercy of God that came chasing after me. Worship the Lord with me as I sing. One night while on life's raging sea Looked as if I would suffer defeat As the blackness of night Closed off the light, my heart sank with fear. My desperate cry rang out with fright. All I could see was no hope in sight. But faith all but gone, I met the one who came looking for me. He came looking for me. was here to rescue my soul from all my fear now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me old Satan had already picked out my grave his plan had moved forward to put me away I drifted so far would anyone care that I'd soon be lost Oh, I knew my destruction was a matter of time Jesus stepped in and said, this one is mine I'm safe from my heart Cause he walked through the storm and came looking for me Oh, he came looking for me This verse is my testimony. Old Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? Oh, I knew my destruction was a matter of time. Jesus stepped in and said, this one is mine. 
Now I'm safe from my heart Cause he walked through the storm He came looking for me He came looking for me He came looking for me Oh, he made a way Well, there was no way was near to rescue my soul calm all my fears now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one came looking for me oh he came looking for me are you glad? he came looking for me he made a way when there was no way was near to rescue my soul, calm all my fears, now I'm safe from my heart, cause I met the one who came looking for me, when I drifted far, Jesus was near to rescue my soul, calm all my fears, now I'm safe from my heart, cause I met the one who came looking for me. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise Hallelujah. tonight. Hallelujah. Give him praise tonight, church. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he found you tonight? I said, aren't you glad he found you tonight? Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. You can be seated for just a moment. Hallelujah. Pastor Wagner leaned over and said, who's the organist? I said, I'm about to introduce you to her. About a year ago at a watermelon festival, I was serving up peach cobbler, and up walks this young lady, up, that, up walks this young lady, I like that, <laughs> she, <laughs> she says, are you the pastor? I said, uh, yes I am, she goes, are you guys oneness? Uh, yes we are, do you baptize in Jesus name? Uh, yes we do, you got a card? I said, I certainly do. Okay, I may see you sometime. And that was Sunday morning, and she's, we haven't been able to get rid of her. She's never left yet. <laughs> Sister Debbie Moses, one of those lights that God drops into a church just when you need it. Yes. Brother Jeremy playing three keyboards at one time. He, somehow he was doing that. We were missing a drummer, after passing a brother Gary, and didn't have another keyboardist, and God dropped drop Sister Debbie in our lap. Then we've got a drummer too. Amen. God gave us a drummer. You ought to meet Matthew. He's from Haiti. He's from Haiti. He gives us a little Caribbean flair up there north of the Ohio River. Hallelujah. But God has certainly blessed us. And Sister Debbie has just been an absolute joy. Uh, you can see her later. She's coming to camp. You can catch her testimony. Come up and hang out with her at camp in a couple of weeks and get to know her. Uh, you're going to love her. Sound guys, just turn the mics off. She don't need, I'm just kidding, she don't need him. <laughs> Sister Debbie blesses with a song tonight. He just thinks he knows me so good. <laughs> he don't even know that I'm bashful. I really am, you know. I, I'm sitting here and I'm plumb nervous. <laughs> I'm just so nervous. After hearing that choir, I think, why are we singing, you know. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. I always said my dad, you know, he was a pretty tough teacher. He preached and, you know, if he said you're going to sing, you're going to sing. So there's no getting out of it. So you, it might be midnight, but you're still going to sing. You know, if you're on that list, you're going to sing. But I am so grateful that God is a good God. We serve a good God. And we're here at your anniversary service. And I know as you're sitting there reminiscing over some of the years and some of the tears, some of the joys that, you know, there's way too many to ever stack into a book. There's way too many to put, but we serve a good, good God. And God knows where we are. As he says, I have a testimony. I need to write a book, you know, but I just can't put it all down, you know, can't shut up long enough to write. But anyway, God has supplied so many needs. He's brought me through so much in my life. Sometimes I've just thought there is just no way he can make something out of this. And he just comes out of it, and uh, 
he gives it. I mean, he plopped me right out here in a cornfield in Cynthia, Indiana, and I couldn't find a church at all that, you know, I just couldn't find one. <laughs> Not that I'm a picky girl, because I like to just take roots and just go with it, but I was really struggling, and I was desperate, and when I walked through that watermelon fest, I was really going just to see what I could find to eat, <laughs> but anyway... But I found more than that, brother and sister Freels. As I seen them, I told Bethany she's been my sidekick for a long time, and we've known known each other and served the Lord together. And I said they're Pentecostal. They are. I can tell. They are. They're the thing that we're. I'm looking for. <laughs> I said I can tell. And, and as I began to talk, I was pretty blunt. I wasn't even going to waste my time if you if you was Trinity and all that stuff. I just wanted to get to the point. And God just brought me to a good group of people that have been such a blessing to me. And I, I guess I'm blessing them, so that's good, you know. <laughs> but um, I just want to sing. Say, I did all of that just to calm some nerves. So, okay, now I'm ready to go. <laughs> but I serve a good God. I'm Southern Gospel, so I'm not going to be nothing like that choir was. So just hold on, you know. It's going to be pure old, just country music here for a minute. <laughs> Now when I get to heaven, I can hardly wait to see my brand new mansion inside my pretty gates. But I won't have time to look around a million years or more. It'll take me a million years to thank the Lord. Oh. 
church done so much for me. this morning. <laughs> Jerusalem got you, you. Jerusalem was a shaking. Pentecost had arrived. In an upper room chamber, they were drunk on the new wine. Peter stood among them said there is no doubt this holy ghost and fire it'll make you dance and shout it's just like fire shut up in my bones holy ghost fire shut up in my bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones holy ghost fire shut up in my bones filled with the spirit he was born to prophesy the prophet jeremiah would lift his voice and cry if quiet folks commanded and go home and leave us alone oh but how can you be quiet when there's fire down in your bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones it's that holy ghost fire shut up in my bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones holy ghost fire shut up in my bones well some people get offended because we dance and shout they say there's too much emotion and there's too much moving about don't tell me to be quiet <laughs> and go sit down in my pew because if you felt like I felt you'd be shouting too it's just like fire Woo! shut up in my bones that holy ghost fire shut up in my bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones holy ghost fire shut up in my balls come on church listen will some people get get offended <laughs> because we dance and shout they say there's too much emotion and there's too much dancing about but don't tell me to keep quiet and go sit down in my pew <laughs> because if you felt like i felt you'd be shouting too it's just like fire shut up in my bones ha, that holy ghost fire shut up in my bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones holy ghost fire shut up in my bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones it's that holy ghost fire shut up in my bones it's just like fire shut up in my bones holy ghost 
Five, come on, this is Pentecost Sunday. Well, Jerusalem was a shaking. How Pentecost had arrived in an upper room chamber. They were drunk on their new wine. Peter stood among them, said there is no doubt. This Holy Ghost and fire, it'll make you dance and shout. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, it's that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones, Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Well, he was filled with the Spirit. He was born to prophesy. Well, the prophet Jeremiah, he would lift his voice and cry. Be quiet, folks commanded. Go home and leave us alone. Oh, but how can you be quiet when there's fire down in your bones? It's just like fire. Come on, church. Shut up in my bones. It's that Holy Ghost and fire. Shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire. Show one more time. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. It's that Holy Ghost and fire. Shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. That Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Come on, on Pentecost Sunday. One more time before the Word of God comes tonight. Why don't you give a shout unto the Lord? We need one more chorus to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Come on, you're apostolic. Why don't you kick off your shoes like in the old church? Why don't you loosen up your tie like in the old church? Why don't you throw down your suit coat and worry about your dry cleaning bill on Monday and just give the Lord a little praise in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Most of y'all are up. It's easy to get down. Why don't you bring the ushers up right now? We'll sing one more chorus. We'll take up a tithe and offering this evening for the service. If you have to give, give unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, man. Amen. Taught the Sunday school class this morning and said, let me ask you a question. Point your finger at yourself and say, am I generous? <laughs> am I generous? taught him a lesson. I said, I'm going to tell you something. This lesson is all about you. Hallelujah. You don't give tithe. You return the tithe. <laughs> you don't keep what's God. You give it back to him. You want to show him you love him, you give him an offerings. <laughs> you want to show him you really love him, you give him an extravagant offerings. Hallelujah. Don't pat yourself on the back for bringing 10% back and plopping it in the, in the little sack here. <laughs> That's just your ticket to admission. Hallelujah. That's expected of you as a Holy Ghost filled child of God. Right off the top. Somebody asked me, well, pastor, is it net or is it gross? What? I lived in the Dominican Republic for a year. Guess what? They don't have personal income tax. How are they supposed to tithe? They don't have property tax in the Dominican Republic. What's their rule for tithing? No, it's the first of the first fruits. It's of your increase. You bring it into the storehouse, hallelujah, for the ministry and for the treasury of the house of the Lord. And then if you love him, if you love him, if you really love him, you give an offering. You give an extravagant offering. Hey, are you generous tonight? We need you to be generous tonight. Amen. I heard y'all had church this morning up in here. Woo! We're going to have church again here in just a little bit. Why don't you stand to your feet tonight and march around as we sing one more chorus before we turn the service to Pastor Wagner. Bless the Lord of the good song tonight. For a long time I traveled.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, set aside, amen, set across from a young lady this afternoon in the jail, amen, amen, and she says, I, I took a friend of mine online, and said, I want to show you a church where you can feel God, and said that this young man had never, never uh, been to church before, amen, as she began to play our services on YouTube, amen, the Holy Ghost fell on him and tears started running down his face, she said, yep, you can feel it, can't you, amen, I'm telling you, friend, I'm telling you, this thing is real, amen, amen, if you've ever been in the world and you know how real the world can be, I'm telling you, this is more real, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Brother White, I didn't know what I was getting into when I got to messing around in rock and roll, but I could feel something. Amen. In the church that I grew up in, you could feel something when I grew up. But by the time we got, got a teenager, amen, they, they done settled down and, and moved into a new church and said, we don't want to mess up this pretty new church. And well, they sure didn't. They sure didn't. I'm telling you, but every one of the young people died. One of the young people died, backslid. Amen, amen. I'm telling you, it's a hopping church now, though. It's a hopping church now. I'm so glad to hear that uh, Russellville, Kentucky is, is back on fire for God. Amen. A thriving, thriving church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. But I said all that to say this. Amen. That uh, I felt some things in the world. Amen, and I didn't know what the end of those things were going to be. Amen, but there, there was, a, there was a, a time when I was having fun. Amen, but there's a chain hooked to the end of that fun, friend. Amen, I mean, it, was, it, it, will, it will drag you down. It will drag you down. And the price you will pay is much further. Amen, and much greater than anything that you thought you were signing up for. Amen, but I'm thankful that God had a redemption for me. Amen, I'm thankful that God had a redemption for me. Thank God I'm free. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My Lord, give give. Uh, uh, apostolic church amen Owensville good hand tonight my lord we're so glad to have them tonight and brother and sister Friels praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord. great great people we have had wonderful wonderful friends of ours amen haven pentecostal church happy anniversary praise the lord praise the lord this is we do all this for you hallelujah hallelujah you are you are the greatest people in the world, and we are thankful for you. Amen. And you're the, your passion that has proven over the years. Amen. God loves you. Amen. And God's going to do great, continue to do great things for you and through you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've been saying for a long, long time. Amen. I'll say it as long as I'm alive. Amen. Souls is the heartbeat of God. Amen. And any time we get our mind on anything else besides souls, amen, we've lost out. We have lost out. We have lost out. Amen. Amen. And so every day we get up out of bed, amen, I'm telling you, we point our hands toward heaven and say, God, bless my city. Move upon my city. Amen. I'm praying for you to move Move into the houses of the people on my street. Amen. Get a hold of their hearts. And the ones that I meet, help me to make a difference. Help me to make a difference. 
Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Because I believe that the Lord is coming soon. Praise God. Amen. It is not the chill bumps that we feel around here that's going to take us to glory. Amen. But I want to take somebody with me. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 And so we're thankful for all our friends, amen, that have helped us come and celebrate this weekend. Amen. We have had a wonderful, wonderful time. Praise God. And we're going to do it again tonight. Praise the Lord. I don't want to hold the preacher back any further. Praise God. Amen. But I do want to say, amen, because he probably won't, if you'd like to get a hold of his, his latest book, Amen. And then if you haven't had any of the previous, I believe there's four previous. Amen. Uh, you can get all of those tonight. Amen. Just uh, uh, just, just let him know you want those. Amen. If you'd like, uh, you, you can't get a hold of him. Amen. You let me know and I'll get a hold of him. Praise the Lord. These are, this is great reading material. Amen. It's a man of passion. Amen. If you didn't know that after this morning. I have seen... Amen. I grew up on preaching. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, uh, that man, this man preached this morning harder than any preaching I've ever remember in my entire life. Amen. I'm telling you, it's still alive. It's still alive. Some people might just write that off. Brother White and says, well, he's too far out there for me. Well, you know, when you look at eternity and you compare, you compare and say, well, I probably should have listened to that preacher. I probably should have listened to that preacher. Amen. I'm telling you, this is the dress I told the young lady in jail today. This is the dressing room. It was fresh on my mind. This is the dressing room for eternity. The choices that we make here are going to decide whether I get to uh, spend eternity with the Lord in glory land or whether I get to spend eternity in torment. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Amen. Come on, Brother White. Amen. Let's clap our hands into the Lord tonight. Amen. Say, God, talk to me. Come on, everybody. Say out loud. God, talk to me. You know, I reckon it would take a corpse to not love Phil Wagner. I love your pastor, and uh, I certainly am thankful today for the opportunity to be here with you folks, and uh, my heart is happy. My spirit is wired up like a cat on cocaine. I am hyped up right now. <laughs> excited about what God's fixing to do I, uh, I got a confession to make if you'll stand take your Bible 1 Corinthians 9 I have a confession to make to you precious precious people I love y'all I love your pastor his wife their family I really do I love you sister Wagner I love y'all y'all are awesome Anybody put that much stuff in the room for me to eat over there, you my new best friend. <laughs> and uh, diet right, everybody knows God may diet right. You know you can't get diet right in Texas. Every now and then you'll find it in a grocery store somewhere. That just goes to show you, everything about Texas ain't so great. Uh, but anyway. I uh, love y'all, but when I scheduled this, me and your pastor kicked around two or three different dates. When I scheduled this, I didn't know that it was Pentecost Sunday. And uh, I didn't figure that out until Easter Sunday. And then I didn't have the heart to call him up and cancel y'all. So I, <laughs> so I worried and I fretted because Pentecost Sunday is a big service at our place. We have a big concert and they had one service today. Started I think 5, 5.30. When we left the apartment, people, we were watching it online, people were receiving the Holy Ghost everywhere. When I... 
got here tonight, I think the latest is that we've had 15 receive the Holy Ghost so far. Seven or eight, I think, baptized so far. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's all about. I don't know how many healings have taken place. They haven't even sent me that number yet. But let me assure you, he's still healing people in Silsby, Texas right now. God bless you. I love you. Give honor to the pastor, first family, his wonderful wife. Uh, my wife gave you a compliment today, baby. She did. My wife said, I like her. I just like her, which is pretty good because I've seen how she treats people she don't like. And that's, so that's a good thing to hear mama say she like you. But, and to our MC tonight and all these singers, I got tickled at the chick that lied up here on the piano. Got up here and said, I'm basically shy by nature and then preached a full-blown sermon. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter number nine and I will begin reading with verse number 26. Love y'all, enjoyed being with you. I hope y'all let me come back again. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> Your pastor's not close to God. First Corinthians chapter number nine, verse number 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not like one of these jokers that just beat the air. I'm going to preach to you tonight and I need everybody in here to listen to what I've got to preach. The first night I came after carnal people. This morning I came after lost people. Tonight I'm coming after saved people that have forgotten what we are supposed to be doing. I'm not going to give you my title just yet. Let me just preach a little something, something here before I give you my title. Would that be all right with everybody? God bless you. Thank you, brother. You may be seated. A few weeks ago, I was flying back from a meeting that I'd consented to preach. And as with many of those meetings, there was a lot of spiritual warfare that was involved uh, I was absolutely exhausted and uh, I got on the airplane I sat down in my seat there were three seats on this side three seats on that side I got a good seat I, I fly so much that they let me board the plane early and I'd gotten a good seat I got the aisle row on the emergency row the aisle seat, rather, on the emergency row, and there was an open seat between me and fella on the other side. Had somebody against the wall, and I was here, and I was happy because there wasn't nobody sitting beside us. People kept coming on, and the guy looked at me, and he said, you think we'll get lucky enough nobody will be sitting here? I said, I don't know, but I hope so. And, and so we sat there, and I, knowing that I was going to get to be home for a few days, I thought, I'm going to use this time to unwind. I will tell you for a truth that doing what I do has its challenges. Because I'm not one of these guys that just walk into a church and preach sermon A3 or sermon A25. I... I really pray when I go to churches and I ask God to give me what I need to say and to do that. I teach all of my preachers. You don't just go into a church to preach a can sermon. You find the heartbeat and the burden of that church and you minister to the heart of that people. To do that, you have to, you, 
you had to transpose your burden. Uh, for instance, I here the last two days, I fly. My wife goes home tomorrow. I fly to Pittsburgh. So I will immediately after church tonight, I'll start trying to channel my burden, pull it away from here and aim it towards Pittsburgh. And then I'm going to be there two nights and I'm going to Maryland and I'm going to be there three nights and I, I've got to channel my burden there and then I get ready to go home, get back to my place about midnight on that Saturday night and I've got to channel my burden back to my church and my people and, and sometimes you're just exhausted. Your mind is tired. Your body is tired. You're spiritually exhausted. Understand sometimes I'm so exhausted both inside my body and outside my body that in my spirit and in my flesh that, 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 that I would never intentionally be rude to anybody. But there are times I'd rather you just leave me be. I don't hate you. I may think you're ignorant. But I don't hate you. I may think you're bugging me. I don't hate you. And uh, so I sat on the plane. And this was one of those days when I was so emotionally, physically, and spiritually exhausted. I just wanted to... This was one of those days and I sat there completely weary, looked like everybody was on the plane and I kind of breathed a sigh of relief. If you don't understand that feeling, you've never flown much. Um, they don't build planes for people my size. And looked like we was good. There's empty seats all over the plane. I thought, oh yeah, we got this one, man. This is good. And just as they're closing the door, they had some squirrely looking little old man rounded that corner. And I'm talking about homeboy was getting with it. And he come running down the aisle. I thought he grabbed the first seat. I said, oh, this is good. No. And he passed up that second area of seats. And I thought, surely, he, we, we got to get out of here. He got to sit down. And he kept getting closer and closer. And I said, surely to God, he's not going on. So help me God, in a whole airplane full of empty seats, he wanted to sit by me. It was my incredible good looks that drew him in. Ultimately, I didn't care. Just leave me alone so I can rest my mind just a little bit. And we sat there and, and everything seemed to be going fine. And uh, when I travel, when we get ready to take off, I've got some noise canceling earphones that I can put in my ears. And I had my iPhone and I had the audio Bible on. And I just closed my eyes and tried to, to, to just relax for a few minutes but my plan didn't last very long we had barely gotten up in the air when this little man with thick glasses and short diminutive stature beside me I was had my eyes closed I'm not trying to be rude I'm faking I'm asleep and in the light, I saw something going. <laughs> and I opened my eyes and, and it was an old dude sitting beside me doing this in my face. I thought, man, I must have been doing good. He thought I was dead. <laughs> All of a sudden, he started pointing my ears. I took my earphone out and I looked at him. He pointed at my iPhone. And he, the conversation went like this. He points at my iPhone and said, Hey, what's that? said, It's a 
phone. His next statement, how much did that cost? I said, I don't got a clue, partner. I got it a long time ago. Once I get my phone and it's working, don't mess with my phone. I'm not like these jokers that have to trade it in every six months when they get a new model. So, he just kind of nodded. I closed my eyes. I try to go back to my rest. And I see something coming. And I open my eyes and there's homeboy doing his hand just like this, an inch away from my nose. And I turned and I looked at him somewhat more sternly this time. And he says to me, what service do you have on your phone? I have Verizon. He said, you mean they can get signal way up here? No, I'm listening to music or, or, or the Bible. Or, and he looked at me and he said, how much does your service cost? <laughs> you got it. I closed my eyes. And all of a sudden, I see it happening again. This time was simple. I just looked at him. He said, what are you listening to? The Bible. Who put it on there? I did. You know what his next question was? How much that cost? Oh now, I'm about to have an aneurysm on so right now. I'm sitting here playing with this phone. And all of a sudden, guess what happened? He points to my ears. I, I, I kind of just snatched the earphone out of my ear. I said, yeah. He said, reaches up and touches my earphone. He said, what's that? Everything in me wanted to say, a microwave oven. I said, it's earphones. He said, what do they do? That's what's putting the sound in my head. Oh, how much they cost. <laughs> yeah. I said, I don't know. It's been a while since I bought them. And, and, and I, I don't know, solitaire or something on my phone. I've got my phone and I'm faking it like I'm really working. I'm doing all of this and I'm, and then in about 20 minutes in, we reach cruising altitude and I realize I'm not going to get any rest on this flight. So I just reach down and I grab my iPad and I start. <laughs> you know, don't you? You was on the same flight, weren't you? So I get my iPhone out and I start going over notes to preach the next day at home and so help me God I see this hand I, I throw an old man off the plane it don't bother me and I looked over at him <laughs> he pointed my iPad and said what's that Honestly, by this point, I'm thinking next time he sticks his hand in my face, I'm taking his finger clean off. <laughs> I said, it's an iPad. He said, how much?
how much that cost. I said, man, I ain't got a clue. I've had it for a while. And within a minute, the old man turns and he starts talking to the dude sitting on the wall that's been looking at some kind of catalog. I thought, well, thank God. And as soon as he gets done talking to the dude against the wall, he jumps up, starts motioning me to move out the way. I looked at him. I figured Papa had to potty. So I got up out the way and he goes down the aisle and I'm thinking, well, at least I get a few minutes of reprieve from this. And all of a sudden, something caught my attention. I look at the fella against the wall and he's looking at me going. <laughs> Can I help you? He said, man, he bought four pair. I said, do what? He said, I'm a boot salesman. I sell these boots that you can walk in chemicals and stuff in these plants and these refineries. And, and said the man said he was retired, didn't really need boots like that, but he liked the way they, they look like space boots. They ranged from $400 to $600 a pair. Old man beside me bought four pair sitting on that airplane. I'm thinking, man, this guy, number first thing I'm thinking is I know the guy's an irritant, but you just took advantage of this old boy. And about that time, Mr. Middle Seat Hand Waver comes back. And, and, and he sits down and eventually he, uh, as we sit down, he, uh, you know, time goes on and, and the dude by the wall was ecstatic because he had sold four pair of boots and I was just hacked off. And within minutes, uh, everything was fairly quiet until the stewardess come around. Now, if you know anything about flying, they bring you a little gargle cup about that big. They call it Coke or whatever you want, but I'm pretty sure they got them cups from some bathroom somewhere and they're just little gargle cups. And then they give you these little bitty, teeny, tiny packs of peanuts because if it's a long trip, we don't want you to black out from lack of nourishment. So we're going to give you four peanuts. <laughs> and sometimes you get pretzels. That's on them good trips. And they come by and they offered us our drinks and they gave us our drinks. And, and she reached up and she grabbed a fistful of uh, the peanuts. And brother, that day, I guess she decided to be kind. We didn't just get one pack of peanuts. We got two packs of peanuts. And about that time, Mr. Middle Seat Hand Waver loses his mind. He starts screaming, Pretzels! Pretzels! I want pretzels! <laughs> Dude is sitting by the emergency door. He's closer to the door than I am. I'll punch an old man in the throat if he tries to open up that door. And I'm looking at him. And he's screaming, Pretzels! I want pretzels! I'm thinking, this guy's an idiot. Which I'd already ascertained that because I'm of higher intelligence. So he was so demanding with his request for pretzels that she starts scurrying around and going to this cart and that cart and she comes back and she hands him one solitary pack of pretzels. And when she hands it to him, she said, uh, this is the only pack of pretzels we've got left on the plane. And when she did, Mr. Middle Seat Hand Waver went into a, 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 a fit like you'd see a little four-year-old kid do. She gave him that and he instantly throws himself back in the chair and he, he's saying, it ain't even worth it, fine, if you only get one pack of pretzels.
and he's bouncing his seat. I knew the people behind him probably wanted to slap him on the top of his gray head. And he's bouncing and he's fussing. And, he, and now my brothers and sisters, I'd like to tell you that it was my intense love and compassion, heart of compassionate heart of ministry that somehow moved me with a burning desire that drove me to comfort that poor man. Instead, I'd rather just tell you the truth. He was by the emergency door and I was just checking to see if I could knock that guy out before he grabbed that handle. And I looked at him and I thought, this dude's gonna spaz out at 30,000 feet in the air. Let's just say that I felt a need to intervene. I was going to offer my superior spiritual services to this man who was now visibly upset and perpetually muttering about how it's not just it's just not worth it if there's not any more pretzels on the airplane. Now I have been highly trained to deal with people. I've read my Bible through many, many, many times. I've studied psychology in the shadow of scriptural things that God tells us. And, and I've strived to understand human reactions from a spiritual perspective. And I looked at this man with my higher intelligence and so help me God. The only thing that come out of my mouth, Henry, was, hey, dude, you okay? <laughs> I don't want to go to jail, but I don't want to take the quick way to the ground either. It was in that moment as if my mind hadn't been blown enough the guy's all messed up. He's all emotional. And he said, I'm sorry. He said, I just, I, I, I like pretzels. <laughs> you think? And I, he starts telling me this story. He was from West Texas and he was raised dirt poor. He was raised so poor that they barely had enough to get by. And outside of having quite a bit of desolate land that somebody had left him, he had nothing. And as we talked, he told me how that his wife had died and he was a good man. And he said, I worked my job because I knew I had to support my family. And he said, I made every one of my kids finish school and then I made them work their way through college and one of them had become I think a doctor and another one had become a lawyer and for some reason all these years after his children had grown up with good careers of their own there was a knock at his rickety old shack's door one day and he said there was some men standing there with suits on he thought I was going to get arrested for something. He said, I didn't. And he opened up the door and he looks at these guys and they say, we're from so-and-so and, -so and uh, we, we, we deal with minerals and stuff in property and we'd like to know if, if we could scour your property and run some tests and dig a few holes just to, to go down so far. We'd like to see if just perchance there's any oil on your property. And he called his kids. His kids said, well, you ain't got nothing to lose, Dad. And so he let them go and to their amazement when they begin to check his land out they found out that this dude was on the largest amount of oil in the entire western part of Texas <laughs> so homeboy went from a rickety old shack on desolate property to being a multi-gazillionaire living on one of the richest oil fields in our nation. His children, now thoroughly educated with the careers of their own, they stepped in to help their father who had no experience with, with anything that resembled handling money, which is why he asked me about the price of everything from my iPhone to my hairspray. Dude wanted to know the price of everything. And he said, I didn't mean to bother you. 
He said, I, I just don't know what things cost. And he said, I've got a lot of money and it's all mine and I got to figure out what to do with it. I started to tell him, keep them cards and letters coming in. I was sitting, I'm going somewhere, you hang on to me. I was sitting by a retired old man who was a brand new gazillionaire that had an end of supply of money and he flew all over the world. Now folks, as if that weren't amazing enough, I asked him, I said, so are you flying for business today? And he looked at me and he said, no. Uh, he said, my kids made sure that I had people that take care of me. I just fly for the pretzels. <laughs> I thought he was joking. I laughed. I said, yeah, that's a good one. That's... And then he let me know. He said, I got a lot of money. And I'm retired and all my kids are gone and I'm not married. And he said, I got a lot of time. And he said, the only thing I really enjoy in life <laughs> are these pretzels and he held up that little bitty old dinky bag of pretzels which he cried over and still hadn't eaten one of them he said I just I just fly around I like pretzels <laughs> so I thought he's joking he's just crazy and, and his kids had set him up with an account that all he had to do brother Wagner is wake up on any given morning and call the airlines and buy a ticket to anywhere he wanted to go and then turn around and hit buy his ticket back and by now I'm intrigued and I figure you know since he's joking about pretzels I'd see where he'd been in his travels after all if you had an endless supply of money imagine the places you'd want to go see he <laughs> I begin to list off several cities. I said, you ever been to New York? Oh yeah, several times. I said, you been to the Empire State Building? He said, no, I've never seen that. Have you seen World Trade Center? No, no I've never, never seen that. And I said, well, what about overseas? Have you been to Greece? Oh yeah, yeah. Have you seen the Acropolis? No. What about Rome? Oh yeah, I went to Rome. I said, did you go see the Colosseum? No, I didn't see nothing. You ever been to Tennessee? Yeah. You ever went to the Smoky Mountains? He said, no, I never seen Smoky Mountains. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my mind around Mr. Middle Seat Hand Waver Gazillionaire. And, 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 and I looked at him and I said, well, if you're not doing all of that and you're not taking care of business, why in the world are you flying? What do you do when you get there? He said, nothing. I just fly and I get off the plane and I'll walk through the airport terminal till I find the plane that's going to take me home and I'll fly back home. I said, what do you mean you go back home? He said, oh, I never leave the terminal. <laughs> why? I told him, why would you go through all the hassle? To me, that was so abstract. I said, why would you go through all of the hassle if you're not going to do anything while you're there? And he said, I told you, buddy, I like the pretzels. And then I got this divine revelation from God. This dude's telling the truth. I said, hey, hey, do you know that they sell pretzels in the grocery store? He said, I know, but they're not as good as these pretzels. I said, man, you can save a lot of money. on an airplane. 
by now, I'm feeling sorry for the dude. My brothers and sisters, let me put this in perspective for you today. If you get up on any given morning, you decide to fly anywhere, especially overseas, on that day, you're gonna have to get two one-way tickets. In the neighborhood, just an average, because I'd, I'd never fly first class, or I never do any, but, I, but, but on the last day, on an average, you're gonna pay between 1200 and probably $1,400 per ticket it each way if you get two packs of pretzels going and you get two more coming that means you get four packets of pretzels that have six seven pretzels in it you've got to see how insane that is if that were my goal I'd have to get up and pack my clothes for the journey I'd have to to get up and leave before daylight I'd have to drive two hours to the terminal I'd have to be there two hours for security purposes I'd have to go through those long security lines I'd have to get that full body x-ray you gotta stand. I'd have to crawl onto a plane with 300 complete strangers. I'd have to cram this backside into a seat that was designed for anorexic pygmies. I'd have to fly for hours to some incredible place where I'd never see one element of that beautiful city and then I'd have to turn around and rush back to the airplane so that I could go through security and do it all again. And I did that because I like pretzels that cost me $700 a pack. Why in the world would Why in the world would people go through what I went through Friday trying to get here for pretzels? And when he began to tell me this, I, I, I thought my head was going to explode because suddenly the preacher in my head went wild. I would remind you today that the Apostle Paul saw a similar situation going on in the midst of the Corinthian church because he said you are in the midst of spiritual warfare and because that warfare was going on the Bible said that Paul was trying to provoke them in the Corinthian church to go beyond just going through the most don't just do what you always do and go through the motions and Paul said I therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight I not as one that beateth the air it was Paul's way of saying I'm not going to travel through all of this spiritual warfare on this vehicle called the anointing with an uncertain destination if I'm going to get on the anointing if I'm going to travel where the spirit of God takes me I've got a goal in mind I'm not going to go through the motions of marching into a vehicle made of the anointing and then just beat the air if I'm going to go through all of this I'm going to do something while I'm there if I've got to go through all of this I'm going to slap the taste out of the devil's mouth if I got to go through all of this I'm going to tap in to the delivering power of God let me paraphrase what Paul said Paul looked at the Corinthian church and said hey dude don't fly for the pretzels there's a whole lot more than just pretzels there's a whole lot of things you can see in the spirit instead of just pretzels I dare you to shake somebody in this place today and tell them don't you fly for the pretzels come on shake somebody right now and 
tell them, don't fly for the pretzels. Hear me today. Don't you ever get caught in the trap of going through the motions of coming to an anointed church and listening to anointed singing and feeling anointed worship and experiencing anointed preaching and just be there for a few little religious pretzels. You better wake up. You better wake up and realize that there are supernatural places that God tries to take all of us when we come into this atmosphere. Do you honestly think that these singers who no doubt practice so long just do that so you can be blessed and do your little patty cake thing? Do you really think that your man of God preaches like he preaches because he wants you to say, Brother Wagner, that was a good sermon. I need somebody in here to hear me today. God sends this vehicle called anointing into every life because God wants you to go to a place of healing. He wants you to go to a place of miracles. He wants you to go to a place of deliverance. If God sends you to all of these anointed destinations, you better understand God's got a plan for you. God's got something to give you. God never intended for you to step into these supernatural destinations that he intended his children to go and just go through the motions while you're there. I've come to preach to you today if you're going to feel this anointing, if you're going to feel the worship, if you're going to feel the preaching, don't fly for the pretzels. Get out and see the glory. Get out and see the power. Get out and see. You got to see how insane that picture is. You're fighting a devil that wants to do everything in his power to destroy you. He wants to devastate your spiritual potential. He wants to annihilate your salvation. But God has put you in the middle of a red hot power packed apostolic anointed atmosphere that can transport you to places of power that hell can't handle. It'll transport you to places of prayer that your enemy can't stop. It'll transport you to places of authority that breaks every yoke. It'll transport you to places of miracles that defy spiritual attacks. It'll transport you to places of healing, places of unity, places of revelation, places of the supernatural where anything can happen. Because of that, you can be assured of this one thing. If I'm going to go through the hassle of getting my clothes ready, if I'm going to go through the hassle of ironing my shirt and my suit, if I'm going to go through the hassle of making sure I leave for church in time, if I'm going to go through the hassle of driving all the way there, if I'm going to go through the hassle of going to a prayer room, if I'm going through the hassle of being in music practice, if I'm going through the hassle of getting a good seat, if I'm going through the hassle of given in the offering if I'm going through the hassle of listening to all the announcements and hearing the choir and enduring the preaching if I'm getting that close to the anointing it's not going to be for some shiny rap song service some pretty package choir selection some bland taste of worship some inconsequential dose of preaching No, no, no. If I'm going through all that business and I'm going to sit down in this vehicle of anointing, you can bet this much. I'm going to make it count. I'm going to make sure 
that I'm not just beating the air. I'm going to make sure that I'm not just going through the motions. Brother, you're going to have to give me some more monitor. It reminds me of the old classic nursery rhyme. You've heard it. Pussycat. Pussycat. Where have you been? I've been to London to see the queen. Pussycat, pussycat. What saw you there? He said, I frightened a little mouse under her chair. Because in spite of making a journey all the way to London and in spite of being in the presence of royalty, in spite of the historic city, in spite of the majestic queen, in spite of the palatial palace, in spite of the extraordinary servants, this cat was fixated on a little inconsequential mouse that was cowering in the dark corner near the greatest dignitary of their land. He didn't even notice the beautiful palace. You know why? He liked pretzels. Can you imagine going to Buckingham Palace and all you see is a little mouse underneath, uh, under her chair. He's looking at the throne, ladies and gentlemen, and that little cat's going, I suspect it was probably bumping somebody beside him doing that right there. He goes over there. Forget the palace. Forget the royalty. He didn't notice it. Forget all of those things. I need you to hear me in this house today. That cat made the journey of a lifetime with no higher aspirations than a mouse. straight somebody picked your heart up carried you to London England and set you down in the midst of royalty and all you see are pretzels sadly it's no different than people that come into the presence of the king of kings with no higher aspirations than a pretty package of pretzels why would you go through all of the hassle to go through all of these amazing spiritually anointed atmospheres and only get there for something to stick in your teeth and say I like pretzels honey if I'm gonna fly in the anointing I'm not staying in the terminal I'm not staying stranded I'm gonna preach to you from experience tonight I've been blessed to see with my my own eyes, uh, the majestic redwoods of California, the lights of Times Square in New York, the endless cornfields in Indiana, the Amish villages in Pennsylvania, the majestic glaciers in Alaska, Niagara Falls in New York State. I've seen the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky. I've seen the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. I've seen the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. I've seen the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. I've stood on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico on the southern edge of our country. I've stood on the shores of Lake Erie on the northern border. I've stood at the Atlantic Ocean on our eastern border. I've stood at the Pacific Ocean on our western border. Let me tell you the perspective I've come from. I've seen with my own eyes the largest marketplace in Africa. I've seen the massive crowds of Hong Kong. I've seen the banana jungles of Ethiopia. I've seen the safaris of South Africa. I've seen the Colosseum at Rome. I've seen the Acropolis in Greece. I've seen the ancient temples of Ephesus. I've seen the museums in Egypt. I've seen the soldiers in Frankfurt, Germany. I've seen the villages of Botswana. I've seen Paradise Island in the Philippines. I've stood in Buckingham Palace.
blessed in London. I've been blessed because of my ministry to see a lot of places. But you hear me today. There's nothing that I've ever seen that compares to the power of God. There's no place that you can go like those spiritually anointed realms that God can take you in. You better hear this preacher today and realize that God can take you in the spirit of dynamic apostolic anointing to greater places than your eyes will ever see. You are on the greatest vehicle this world has. I had 15 at least brand new people today who have received the Holy Ghost that found in that church in little old Silsby, Texas something greater than the tallest redwood something that's stronger than the greatest mountain you better let me preach to you if you're going to flow in the anointing don't sit in that pew and just eat the pretzels you gotta get up you gotta get out you gotta move Oh, you don't understand. I'm telling you today, don't fly for the pretzels. I've never seen an ocean that compares to the depths of God's spirit. I've never seen a river that compares to the flow of God's anointing. I've never seen a mountain that compares to the heights that I've gone to in an apostolic service. Don't you fly for the pretzels. I've never seen a glacier whose majesty compared to the glories I've seen in God's house. I've never seen a light that compared to the revelations I got in prayer. I've never seen the supernatural that compared to the places that God's taken me in the anointing. Don't fly for the pretzels. I've never seen power compared to the divine power I've experienced at an apostolic altar. I've never seen an army that compared to the spiritual authority I felt while walking in the spirit. I need you to hear me tonight, Haven. I've come to preach to you on this last service. We are notorious for having anointed preaching and anointed worship and anointed music and anointed people and anointed ministry that takes us to places of healing but we never see that healing we are notorious for letting the anointing take us to places of miracles but we never see those miracles we are we are famous for letting the anointing take us to place of deliverance but we never see that deliverance ladies and gentlemen you got to quit flying for the pretzels you've got to quit flying for the pretzels you're supposed to be here here in hopes that God will give you direction but I want to tell you what the damnation of our apostolic churches is going to be we've got schedules without destiny we've got fellowship without a flow we've got interaction without intimacy don't ever get the preconceived idea in your mind that a shiny little bag of pretzels is worth all of this if you're gonna fly get out of the terminal and see the glory of God okay alright let's get where the rubber meets the road I have said in you I missed the first night but I've sat in three services now brother Wagner and I believe your music has got a little bit better every service seem like every time y'all do something it gets just a little bit better you just keep growing everything Whew. anointed music there's an anointing that flows through the ministry everybody that touches that pulpit anointing seems to hit them and they seem to elucidate in the flow of that anointing and articulate words of inspiration thank God for the anointing but I've come to tell you what the damnation of that is let me tell you what it is you 
come to church and you sat down and all of a sudden you feel the rumbling of that service before it ever starts. It starts rumbling out of a prayer room and the next thing you know they take off with a song and then they're going to worship and they're going to have an offering and we're going to go through and then they're going to have preaching and you're going to listen to the preaching and you're going to clap your hands a little every now and then but if you're not careful you're going to stay with your carcass glued in that pew and you're going to say I'm just here because I like to sing it I'm just here because I like Brother White I'm just here because I love Brother Wagner let me tell you what you need to do if the anointing is going to take us there get out of your pew get out of your seat get out of that place you don't understand brother what I'm tired I work all day no I tell you what the problem is you're selfish you think all this is about you How you doing, buddy? Sly. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Come on, Bubba, play. Sing. Hang on. <laughs> Woo! We kick back and say, man, that's good preaching right there. Did you hear that? Man, that guy, he's a screamer. This dude is scared to death here right now. <laughs> it's okay. You can do it, son. Here, here. Did you, did you? <laughs> son, you don't get that other one up here. You're going to go crippled. You're going to walk funny the rest of your life if you don't get that leg up here. And we sit here and we hear, Brother Wagner, there ain't nothing wrong with your music. Now I felt something step in. There ain't nothing wrong with your preaching. There ain't nothing wrong with what you got going here. There's nothing wrong with you clapping your hands and doing what you do. I'm going to tell you what's wrong. We've learned to sit back and say, I like pretzels. I like that singing. Why are we going to go through all of that if we're not going to tap in to something supernatural? I dare you get out of the terminal for about three seconds. I dare you. Some of you need to get on your feet and get out of the terminal for about ten minutes. Watch this. Watch this. My God, I feel an anointing on this lady. Brother Wagner, when them people begin to sing tonight, I watched your precious wife who could have sat there and said, I got to make sure everything's perfect. She got out of her seat and she starts dancing and she starts worshiping. You know why? Because she's saying, I'm not staying in the terminal. I'm not going to stay in here. There's a healing and I want it. There's deliverance and I want it. Hey, 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 hey. I got a feeling. You just stepped into a supernatural realm. I feel healing in this building right now. I may not get any further, but somebody just stepped in.
into a place where miracles can take place. Into a realm where the supernatural can show up. I left my towel in the pew, I think. Here I'm most Come here. I was going to preach to you about Naaman tonight because Naaman, ain't it funny how you just picked up before service ever started about Naaman? He said, go dip in Jordan. You know what he was there for, darling? He wanted the pretzels. He's going to come out. He's going to wave his hand over me. He's going to come. Did you notice? He said, well, I know what's going to happen. He's going to come out and wave his hand over me. And I'm going to be healed. The old prophet said, no, I'm not. I want you to go down to the river. There is an anointed river down there. And you need to dip seven times. You know what Naaman said? Naaman said, I'm here for the pretzels. You supposed to wave your hand in front of me because I like pretzels. I don't intend to do muddy river. It's not Euphrates and Ferris, greater rivers than this. Ah, but thank God he had a little servant that said, man, if the supernatural is waiting here in that destination, you need to run into the flow. You need to run into the don't stay in the terminal. I'm going to throw away a good message tonight because I want this church to notice something. When I told you to give God 10 seconds of stepping out of the terminal, I felt healing step in here, Bubba. I felt the miraculous step in. There are still healings here right now. I think it's more than coincidence. I stepped in the door this Sunday morning and I had two different people stop me and say I've got cancer. They say it's not good. I've got cancer in my body. Let me help you, honey. I know the one that heals cancer. I know the one that delivers you. Ten seconds. Ten seconds of getting out of the terminal. Put us in the presence of the supernatural. My message is so simple. Forget everything else I was going to say. Let me tell you what God wants to say. If 10 seconds of stepping out of the terminal will unleash the miraculous, what would 10 minutes do? What would 10 hours do? What would 10, what would happen if you'd learn to step out? of the terminal. Watch, watch. Hey, 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 hey. Listen to me now. Let me show you what we do. We come in. We go through security. We get in the church and we stand there. We get our nice pretty seat and then God moves. We have good anointed sin, anointed preaching, anointed worship. You know what most of our people do? Woo. Where are you going? I gotta run to the next airplane. I gotta find the next one because I gotta go back to what I used to be. I gotta go back to the things I used to think. You've got to go back. No, no, no. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to climb out of the terminal. You need to get out and say, nope, I'm going to go through the anointing. I'm going to feel the power of God. I'm going to let God do in my world. What he wants to do. Baby, are you ready to be healed? You ready? You rode the vehicle here. Give me about seven ladies that feel the power of God on them to lay hands on this darling tonight. 
Shika no moshe. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Shilamo ne mo kaye. Ne kalamo shehetaye. Shilamo ke maye. Elamo ke mo daye. Pray, pray, pray. That's it, baby, rejoice. Come on, baby, rejoice. Let me show you how easy it is to step out of the terminal. I want everybody in this building that needs a miracle right now. Get out of your pew. Run to this altar. Crawl out of the terminal today. Stand at this altar. And God's going to begin to release you. You don't need my hand on your head. You don't even need your, your pastor's hand on your head. What you need is a miracle. It's time, baby. Now I need everybody that's got that kind of faith. Run to this altar and lay hands on these people. Now, child. Now, child. Consume her with the Holy Ghost. Consume her! Hey, this is what happens when you get out of the terminal. This is what happens when you go see the sights. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now. 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 Come on, baby. Now, Jesus. God, I curse everything that's not like you. Now, now, she le mo ke bai ne kalo ondo she he mama yo ne kando lo ho she tamale kando ho ye. Come on, church. You don't need music. You need to see the sights when you step in the spirit. By the authority of the name of Jesus. By the authority of the name of Jesus. I speak the miraculous into existence now. Now, baby. Now, baby. Woo! Come on, see the sights. See the sights. Head on, Moshe, boy. God, now you do a miracle. You do a miracle right now, God. From the front to the back. Now, baby. 
That's it. Pray. Pray. Now, Jesus. Come on, darling. Come on, baby. He loves you as much as he loves me, baby. He's healed me so many ways. Pray, church. Come on, church. Go see the sights. Go see the wonders. Go see the miracles. Because of the tenderness of your spirit, God said that he will begin to work the miraculous in your world. But you must draw closer to him. You must give him your time and your attention. And God's going to begin to do some supernatural things.
Church, I feel the anointing in this house. I feel a hovering spirit of miracles. There's a hovering presence of healing here. You don't need anything dynamic or dramatic. You need to lift your hands to the Lord right now and say, God, finish it. You started it, God. Now finish it, Jesus. Finish it, Jesus. Pentecostal church it's time it's time don't care who left don't care who stayed don't care what's up don't care what's down it's time for Haven to hit the next level now and to hit the next level 
please listen to this crazy preacher tonight. If you're going to hit the next level, you've got to learn to come to church. And when the anointing starts flowing, you've got to get up out of your seat. Get out of your comfortable little terminal. And go see those supernatural sights that God's got planned for you. But the Wagner healings ought to be an every week occurrence in this church. The miraculous ought to be an every week occurrence in this house. You ought to be known all over Henderson, Kentucky as the healing church. You need it, God can do it there at Haven. You need it, God can heal you there at Haven. It's time. But if you're going to get that job done, you got to quit riding on the anointing and turning around and going right back home. you got to get into this flow and let God do with you the things that I'm preaching about tonight. God bless you. I love y'all. Raise our hands unto the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 God, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be messing with a game boy sitting in the middle of Grand Canyon. I'm going to be eating candy sitting at a gourmet feast. I'm going to be jumping in a puddle when I could be swimming in the ocean. Time has come for me. Amen. To wake up and see the glory. Wake up and see the glory. Amen. We're not going to ain't we going to mess around playing marbles with diamonds. Amen. We got the real thing. We got the real thing. Praise God. And we're not going to stop until we have the real thing. Praise God. Throw your hands in there. If you're done, if you're done with church as usual, if you're done with church as usual, throw your hands in there and say, God, here I am. I am coming full force. Praise God. Praise God. I'm not going to play Game Boy sitting in the middle of Grand Canyon. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Move around, shake hands with folks. Amen. Amen. Let's give Owensville Church a good hand tonight. My gracious. Coming this way and worshiping with us. Amen. Celebrating with us. Thank you all so much. We love you all. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for coming. Amen. Move around, shake hands. Hug somebody if it's appropriate. Praise the Lord.